Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. So hello and welcome everyone to our index sorting data analysis webinar in FCS Express 7. My name is Rafael Gomez Amaro. I am a technical application specialist at DeNovo Software. If you are new to us and to FCS Express, our company is based in sunny Southern California, just outside of downtown Los Angeles. We've been providing flow and image cytometry, data analysis and reporting software for over 20 years. Now, if you have any questions during our webinar today, please feel free to reach out and ask at any time by entering those questions into the questions panel that's located in your GoToWebinar controls. Our staff will do our best to answer those questions promptly, either during the webinar or via direct reply from the questions panel, which you can see on the screen here. Before we dive into our data analysis, let's first talk about what index sorting is and how we are using it. And then we can talk a little bit about the goals for our webinar today. Index sorting allows researchers to review the complete phenotype of every single event sorted into a plate and associate that event with all sorted and non-sorted events. In FCS Express, we allow for the analysis and reporting of index sorting data using our plate heat maps along with the standard plot offerings. What this means is that in order to work with index sorting data in FCS Express, you will need to purchase the high content add-on. With index sorting data, heat maps will display the number of events and parameters of the phenotypic data for all sorted events. Wells may be gated on individually or as groups using well gates, which are then back gated onto other plots to view the individually sorted cells in the context of the entire acquired or sorted samples. Currently, we support index sorting files from the following instruments and software. The Influx and Chorus from BD Biosciences, the Diva software, again from BD, and the Summit software from Beckman Coulter. For today's webinar, we'll be focusing on learning the ins and outs of index sort data with plate heat maps. We'll be showing you how to insert a plate heat map and view the index sorted data. Create gates based on the wells of the heat map to group sorted events. We'll explore the emphasize on plots feature, which you can use to focus in different populations that you have gated. And this will be a useful tool to look at rare events that could be sorted into a plate. We'll use color dot plots to isolate sorted events from non-sorted events. We'll extract statistics from our heat maps using heat map statistics grids. And we'll format those heat maps to show things like overlays or multiple files and multiple statistics using things like the well radius parameter. So by the end of this webinar today, we'll have worked through the different steps that I've outlined here with all four file types compatible with index sorting in FCS Express. Now let's go ahead and get started by looking at the influx. And with the influx, the index sorted data files actually contain the information on both the sorted and unsorted events. In FCS Express, we can isolate and view the sorted events using the plate heat map which can be found on the insert tab in our other plot section here. By using plate heat maps, along with things like overlays and back gating, we can view the index sorted data in the context of the entire sorted sample. In this layout here, I've already preloaded my influx data into my data list. So let's grab that data and have a closer look. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop that file right onto an empty space on my layout. And we're gonna be working with two different plot types here the color dot plot, and this is to allow us to see color back gating from our heat maps, and also the plate heat map, which will allow us to view our index sorted data, those sorted events. So I'm gonna click OK, and you'll see both of those plot types have been loaded onto my layout. Now the plate heat map we see here in front, this is just the same as any other plot type in SCS Express. So I can move it around, you know, I can resize it. It's just like my color dot plot below. And what I'm gonna do here is just arrange these plots here. I'm gonna duplicate this color dot plot and I'm gonna move this off to the right because we're gonna be working with a few different parameters here. And I'm gonna resize my heat map so that we can see all the 96 wells and this represents 96 sorted events from my influx here. And now that my plots are arranged, let's go ahead and set up my plate heat map. Now the plate heat map function is identically to any other plot type we have available. So I can do things like change my Y axis by simply clicking on that parameter. And you can see that I have my parameter list here. In this case, I'm gonna select my GFP or FITC and I can view those colors on my plot. And those are updating to show, in this case, my arithmetic mean for my GFP 
that color corresponds to that value on each of these wells. Let's go ahead and update our dot plot parameters as well. So on my plot down to the left, we're going to be looking at fluorescent parameters. And I'll just go ahead and select those briefly, GFP and PE size 7. And then on this plot to the right, we're going to be looking at some scatter parameters here. And there's my side scatter. And now I have these data all set up to analyze. Now it's important to emphasize that with our influx data right now on my two color dot plots below, we are looking at all of the events, including the index sorted events. Well, on my plate heat map, we contain only the index sorted events. Let's have a closer look at the index sorted events on the heat map. To do that, we're going to start by creating gates on each of these individual wells, which represent our sorted events on the heat map. This will let us see where those sorted events fall in relation to my non sorted events using only back gating onto those color dot plots. To do this, we need to create a well gate, which are going to be gates specific to our plate heat maps. These well gates allow us to select different wells or groups of wells on the plate and view their contents. To add in a well gate, I need to go up to my gating tab up at the top, and in my create gate section, I'll select the create well gate button. And when I click on that, all I need to do is just pick one of these wells, or in this example, I'm actually going to draw a rectangle around all of the wells on my plate here, because we're going to make a gate that encompasses our entire plate, all those 96 sorted events. And I'm going to call this gate the all wells gate here. And I'm going to go ahead and leave that gate color as red. If I wanted to change it, I could. Again, these are just regular gates, except for it's based off of the wells of a heat map. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see that all 96 wells have been selected. And when I click close here, I've created my all wells gate. And now that we've created that gate, which again shows all these sorted events on our plate, we might be able, if we look down at our color dot plots below, to faintly see that there are some red dots back gating onto our color dot plots. I'll maximize this, and you can kind of see this if we zoom in close. But it's pretty difficult to do that um, just from a standard sort of view here. It's difficult to pick out those 96 events because, again, we're looking at those few events versus the entire data file. To help us visualize these rare events, we're going to use the Emphasize on Plots feature. This feature dramatically increases the pixel size of any events within our gate, in this case, that all wells gate, so that we can then isolate and analyze those events much easier on our plots below. To activate this feature for our all wells gate, we need to edit the gate properties. And this can be done with our gate view, which is located on the insert tab in this general section. I'll just go ahead and select my gate view, and I'm just going to draw that right into the middle here. And once we've added our gate view, we can see that the gate view shows us our entire gating hierarchy, or in this case, just our single all wells gate. And by double clicking on this little box next to our all wells gate, we can edit that gate's properties. So here, what I'm going to do is select the emphasize on plots option here. And when I check that box, what's going to happen is that the pixel size of any events that are within my gate here are going to be increased. And that's going to allow us to see those events much easier on these plots. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now what we can see on my plots below is that the events within the all wells gate are emphasized. There are these large red pixels on these color dot plots with that red color drawn from the gate color itself. This feature will be very useful in instances where we want to isolate one specific well from the entire plate here. And that'll let us see that single dot much easier by its size and also by its color. Now, since well gates work the same as any other gate in FCS Express, we can simply drag and drop this gate from our gate view onto, let's say, my dot plot to the right, and we can apply that gate. And now we're looking at only the index sorted data, the wells or events in my all wells gate. And if we look at my plot to the left, we're still looking at all the events, both sorted and non-sorted, with the index sorted events emphasized here in red. Now, in addition to gating on populations, we can also format our heat map to show off additional parameters or statistics using things like overlays and the well radius statistic. Overlays allow us to show multiple files on the same plot. With our heat maps here, the overlays will be shown for each well like slices of a pie. So in total, on any one of my wells here, we can have up to five different statistics, and that's going to be shown each one of those statistics as five different pie slices. We can also assign a statistic to represent the size of the overall well 
the well radius statistic. For this influx data, we're going to start by adding an overlay using that pi method. And in later examples, we'll show you how we can add the well radius statistic. To add an overlay to our heat map in the middle here, we can just simply right click on that heat map and we're going to select the add overlay using advanced open data dialog option. Because we're going to be overlaying the same data file, that same influx file here, instead of selecting a new data file, I can go to my data list tab here and I'm just going to check this box just to show uh, the files that I'm looking at and not that full path. And what I'm going to do is select my influx data and we're just going to click OK to load that in as a second overlay. Next, we need to select our y-axis parameter to add to our heat map. For this current overlay that we're looking at on our heat map, you can see we are looking at the GFP or FITSI parameter. And I'm going to go ahead and change that for our next overlay so that we're looking at a different parameter here, PE size 7. So I'll scroll down and select that and click OK. Now we can see on our heat map, it's been updated. And we have an upper slice and a lower slice for each well, with each slice representing a different parameter and statistic. We can also format our heat maps to change how we view this data based on our aesthetic preferences for the things like the overlays or their color levels or color scaling. So to format any object in SCS Express, whether it's a plate heat map or a plot or a text box, all you need to do is just right click on that object and select format. And in FCS Express 7, we have our live dockable formatting interface. And this is going to allow me to dock this window off to the left or to the very right here by just dropping it on one of those little icons. Now, this live dockable formatting interface allows me to change any one of the formatting attributes of this plot, whether that's the axes or the font or the number of ticks, or I can add in a title or a legend or change the background border, the color levels. In this example, I'm going to start by modifying the overlays here. And when we look at the overlays formatting category, we can see that I have my two overlays. It's the same data file. The first overlay, we're looking at that GFP, the FITC parameter, and we're looking at the arithmetic mean. And on the second overlay, we're looking at our PE size 7, and the statistic we're showing or coloring on is that arithmetic mean. Now, for this example, we're going to leave everything as is, but of course, I could just use these drop downs and I could change this to the median for my statistic or even change my parameter here for that particular overlay. From this same formatting window, I can also adjust the heat map color levels and scaling that we see on these wells by changing my drop down category to color levels. And we have our selected color level. Currently, the default is green red. And if I click on that drop down, I can change that to a red gradient or I can go up and change it to a flame or a rainbow and the data is going to be colored accordingly. If I leave it at the default green red and we go down to our color level properties, we can talk a little bit more about changing the style or the color level scaling. Now the style is going to inform me on how I'm coloring things, whether we're looking at coloring based off of a fixed range of values or coloring based off of a percentile or in this case, a threshold where we can set some color and Below that value, we're color A, and above that value, we're color B. Now with the default, the mean plus minus standard deviation, what we're actually looking at here is we're taking the mean value of whatever parameter and statistic we have here across all of our wells, and then for each individual well, we're gonna look at that statistic, and we're gonna see how many standard deviations away it is from the mean of all the wells. The mean of all the wells will be colored in black, while if we have a well with a higher value than that mean it's going to show up in red. If it's a lower value, it's going to show up in green. But we can change how that color scaling actually happens by changing the standard deviations. Because again, we're looking at how far away that value is from the mean, and I can reduce the actual size of that value to change a bigger color based off of a smaller difference from the mean. So in this case, I'm going to pick one for my standard deviation. And now we see our heat map updates, and we have these nice color levels here that are adjusting and allowing me to get a much better spread of visual representation of what's going on here. And again, the upper half is corresponding to my GFP arithmetic mean, and the lower half is corresponding to that PE size 7 arithmetic mean. And remember, with overlays, we can add up to five slices or files to the wells of our heat map. So we're not just limited to the two parameters and statistics that we've selected. From this point, Rather than comparing the colors on our heat map, we can actually grab the real values from each of these wells and slices. Using a plate map stats grid, 
we can extract, say, the GFP arithmetic mean for every well in our heat map. Now, to do this, to pull out the plate heat map stats grid, we simply need to insert in a text box. So I'm going to come up to my insert tab, select my text box, and I'm just going to draw that over my plots on the bottom. And from inside of my text box, I can right click and go to the insert option here. And here we have our insert plate heat map stats grid. And I'll pick my influx data. And then all we have to do is pick which overlay, my GFP or my PE size 7. And then I choose the grid layout stats grid. And when I select that, we're going to get a stats grid, which is a nice compact table that contains all of these statistics associated with our GFP arithmetic mean, that upper slice here. And each one of the wells within our heat map is actually showing its corresponding value to the same position in the table. So C7 is showing the same value as C7 up here. This provides us a quick way to pull up all of these statistics and allows us to do that same kind of statistical analysis on these stats that we would do for any other value we generate in the software. Let's move on to our next example using summit data. Summit data is going to behave identically to the influx data. What that means is that the summit index sorting data files are going to contain information on both the sorted and unsorted events. On this page here, you can see that I already have inserted my plate heat map along with my two color dot plots down at the bottom. For our heat map here, we've also formatted the color scaling to use a different standard deviation. That way we get a better separation of our colors. And on our color dot plots below, we're showing a scatter plot on the right, and we're looking at several different fluorescent parameters on the left. In the center, we've already drawn in our gate view. And what we're going to do here is just simply delete that previous gate, and we're going to start anew with our summit data. Now, the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to use well gates to grab specific wells from my summit data, rather than all the wells on my plate. In this example, we're going to be including only wells that are bright red. So I'm going to go up to my gating tab, and I'm going to select my Create Well Gate button, and I'm just going to click on one of these bright red wells. And that's what we're going to call this gate, Bright Red Wells. And the first thing I'm going to do after naming that is I'm going to check this box to emphasize on my plots, because I want to see those show up as I'm adding the wells on my plots here. So I'm going to click OK. And you can see that I have my first uh, emphasize event here on my plot, so we know where well B2 is. But if I hold down Control, or this will be a command on a Mac, I can multiple select these different wells. And you're seeing that they're showing up on my plot as I select each one. And you can see each of those wells kind of losing that outline as I select it. So I know which ones I've selected because they don't have that dark line. They're just bright red here. And so, again, this is actually a really neat tool for working with our data because we can select which of these populations that we actually care about. And we're not limited to these two color dot plots below, by the way. We can explore where these cells fall on any parameter we've collected just by changing the parameter and these plots are adding in some new data. Since we're not limited to making one gate, we can come back to our heat map and do the same thing for our bright green wells. So I'm going to click on my heat map. I'm going to select my well gate and i'm gonna select multiple bright green wells we'll call that again that aptly named bright green wells gate and i'm going to make this a green color to correspond with our green wells and again i'm going to emphasize those on the plots and notice as i'm holding down control and i'm selecting those different wells you're going to see them appear on my plot below on both plots actually they're back gating now, I don't necessarily have to click on all of these different green wells. That's quite a few. Probably got enough there. So I'm going to close that out. But what we can see is as I'm adding these, we can see where each individual cell comes up. Or maybe we're going to look at where groups of cells are showing up or rows or columns here. We can use these well gates in any way that we want. And just like regular gates, we can use the well gates and apply them to our plots. So I can say drag and drop my bright green wells gate onto the plot to my left here. And then I'm only looking at the events within the gate on my plot. Now, in our last example, we used overlays on our heat map to show two different statistics from the same set of data. And for this summit data, what I wanted to show you was another way to show multiple statistics, this time using the radius statistic to control the size of the radius of our wells here. So again, we're going to go and format this heat map. So I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to go to my formatting dropdown and select the overlays formatting category. And we see we have our one overlay, our summit data on here. And what I want you to note now is that the current selection for our statistic parameter for the summit data is this 405795 parameter. 
and the statistics show us the median. And if we wanted to add in another statistic using the well radius, so I want to make these wells bigger or smaller based off of that value, I would just go down to that statistic down here, the radius parameter, and I can just change this drop down from no radius parameter. And we'll look at a second statistic here. We'll scroll down and we'll look at, um, here we have this 561, um, 795. I'll pick that. And since we have the statistic as the median, I'm going to go ahead and choose the median to match those up. And now when we look back at our heat map on the right, we can see that the wells have updated to reflect those changes. So the heat, our color in each one of these wells is representing the median for my 405 parameter, which you can see here. While the radius of these wells, the actual size of them, reflects the median for my 561 parameter, that radius parameter that is set here. So anything that has a larger radius is going to be brighter for 561. It's going to have a higher mean. The radius statistic is then another tool that we can add to our heat map on top of overlays to show multiple statistics for our sorted events. And as with anything in FCS Express, we can format these to show our data using different color levels or scaling to highlight the data as we need to. Or we can pull out our actual statistic values using a text box and our plate heat map stats grid. Moving on to the next page, we're going to start looking at data files from the Diva software. And with Diva, the way our data works is going to be a little different from the first two examples I've shown. The main difference is that the Diva collects two sets of separate files. We're going to collect a larger master FCS file that contains information on all of the events collected during a sort. And then we have either a single file, a single index sort file, or a number of smaller files that contain only our index sorted events. And you can see that here off in my data list. The master sort file that contains all events and my index sort file that contains the cells that I've actually sorted onto my plate here. So on this page, we have set up our plate heat map. It's a single plate heat map and our two color dot plots below. And on the heat map, we have our index sorted files. And what we're looking at again is that we've sorted 96 cells into these wells of a 96 well plate. And you can see the dot plots below, we have just those 96 cells plotted. In the center again, we have our gate view. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna select those gates and we're just gonna delete them off of our analysis, just like we did previously. So we can start working now with our Diva data. So with the Diva index data, we can go up to our gating tab and we can create another well gate. And in this case, I'm only going to grab one specific well, well A1. And I'm going to call my gate A1. We're going to leave it as the red color here. And again, I'm going to check the box to emphasize on my plots. And when I click OK, you can see that well has been created. It's backgated on my plots. We have our single event appearing in red on those color dot plots. So I'll click Close to create that gate. If we wanted to create another single well gate, we can just do that process again. So I'm going to go back to my well gate here. And this time, I'm going to select another gate. This time, it's going to be a single well. And we're going to grab this E11, so a different color well. I'm going to call this my E11 single well. And we're going to color this a nice green color. We'll just keep that color aesthetic there. And again, I want to emphasize those on my plots. And when I click OK, now we can see that my green dot has appeared on those plots again. I'll click Close. And I have my A1 and E11 gates created. And if we look at our color dot plots below, we see that it turns out well E11 contained a FITC positive cell, while A1 contained a PE positive cell. And we see that those two cells fell into distinct populations within my scatter plot here. Now, of course, we can create additional wells. We can capture multiple wells or even the entire plate. And just like with our past gate examples, we can then apply those gates, in this case, our single well gates, to these plots down here below so that we're only looking at one sorted event. So I can grab my A1 gate here and drop it onto my plot to the left and grab my E1 and drop it onto the plot to the right. And we have those single event plotted on each one of those respective wells. Now, the next question we might have is, how do we look at the sorted versus all of our unsorted events with Diva files? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and ungate these two plots. So I'll go to my current gate menu and I'll just select no gate, or I can just use this uh, undo button up the top to undo those last two actions. And I can see all my 96 uh, events that are sorted back on here. And what I'm going to do next is I'm gonna go up to my data list here. 
and I'm going to grab my master sort file. Remember, the index sort file we're working with right now contains those 96 cells that I've sorted. The master sort file is going to contain all of my events, sorted and non-sorted. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drag and drop that master sort file onto my FITSI versus PE plot to the left here. And I'm going to add that data as an overlay to that plot. So we're going to be looking at two different sets of data, the index sort data and my master sort data on that same plot. So I'll click OK here after selecting the add the files to the plot as a new overlay. And when we do that, we see lots of new red dots, and these represent my master sort file. And this is all of the events sorted and non-sorted. And my index sort file, that data got hidden in this sea of dots because, again, we were only originally looking at 96 cells. So what we can do here is rather than use that trick of emphasizing the events in gates, we can actually format this plot so that we're emphasizing all of the events on a specific overlay instead and bring those overlays or overlay to the front of the plot. And what that lets me do is essentially easily differentiate between my two overlays on this plot here, the master and the index sorted files. So to format my overlay, again, I click on my plot and I go up to my uh, formatting dropdown and I can pick overlays. And we're gonna highlight our overlay order here again. The first file is our index sorted data. And the second overlay is our master sort data. And you can see that that's colored down here in red compared to the index sort data, which was in black. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the order of these two overlays. I'm going to place my master file to be the first overlay. And what that's going to allow me to do is that's going to then allow me to place my index sort data on top of that. And if you look really carefully at these plots, you might now see that I have those uh, black dots here on top of my first overlay, the red dots from the master sort file. So the next thing that we can do is we can go ahead and change the dot size of our second overlay, that index sort data, so that those pixels will really stick out. So down here, I can select my dot size and I just increase that to five. And as you're looking at my plot, you can see where those index sorted files are now popping out. And so it's a really nice clear overlay that I've created here. And this is gonna easily differentiate where my index sort data is, again, in relation to my master sort data. So if I maximize this plot, we just blow it up really quick. We can really see the difference between these two sets of data and where they're falling. My index sort data in black, and my master sort data colored in red. So I'm gonna go ahead and restore this back down to its regular size. And of course, once we've done all this, we can add in additional things. So we can start looking at our statistics for these populations. I can add in my stat grid if we needed, or we can add some overlays to our heat map here, which I'm gonna do again, just to show you that workflow. So what I'm gonna to do to add in an overlay to my heat map here is I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna add overlay using the advanced open data dialog. And again, we're going to be overlaying our index sort data file. So we're gonna overlay the same file. I don't have to select a new file. I just go to the data list tab and I'm gonna uncheck this box so that I can see just the names of my files only, not that full path. And now what I can do here is I can pick my index sort file here. That's what we had plotted in our original heat map and I'm going to click OK to add that as my second overlay. And we're originally looking at our PE arithmetic mean, that's the first overlay. So we're gonna change that to FITSI for our second overlay. And when I click OK, we can see that with that overlay added, we have all that new data on our heat map with the top slice that's gonna to correspond to my FITSI arithmetic mean and the bottom slice is going to be my PE arithmetic mean. So these heat maps can really be a great resource for us to really get an idea of what's going on within all of the individual wells of our index sorted data without actually having to focus on each well individually. For our last example today, we're going to look at chorus data. The chorus index sorting data is going to be a little different when you first open it. It contains only the index sorted events. So what you can see here is that I have my plate heat map available but we've only sorted 10 cells, and that shows up as 10 different wells. We didn't sort the entire plate. Below my heat map, we have our dot plot set up, and on these, we have these truncated and perfectly shaped rectangles and squares. And the way to work around this, to kind of get around these funny shapes here, is we're gonna start gating on our sorted data, and once we start doing that, we can then 
gate on these plots below and we can look at the populations that we care about here. To start, again, we're going to have to delete these two gates that we created from our diva analysis. And then we're going to go ahead and create a well gate on my course data. So I'm going to start by creating another all wells gate. So I'm going to go up to the top, select my well gate, and I'm just going to draw a large rectangle around all of those wells. And we'll call this all wells. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to, again, emphasize this on my plots, but I'm going to change my gate color to blue. And I'm going to click OK. And you can see that I've selected only those wells that have data in them here. And if we look down at the bottom, we can see that that is actually back gating onto here. And I have my all wells in my gate view. So I'll close that out. But once we've created our all wells gate, we can come in here and we can apply that gate to my two plots to the left and right. And when I do that, we're now focusing only on our index sorted events on these plots. And that's how we want to work with this chorus data. We want to create well gates, and then we want to apply those gates to our plots for further analysis of our samples. Even if we had our all wells gate created, again, if we wanted to create well gates on single wells or multiple wells, we can do that. In this case, I'm going to select the subset of my wells, my red wells, and we're going to make a gate on that. So I'm going to click on my well gate, and I'm just going to grab one of these red wells, and we're going to call this our red wells gate. We're going to leave that the color red, and we're going to emphasize on those plots and click OK. And I'm going to hold down my control now to pick the rest of those red wells. And you can see that those are being backgated and showing up on my plots below. So I'll go ahead and close that out. We can continue to add in more gates. So we can add in another gate for our green wells. So I'll click on the well gate here. And again, this is just showing you that you know it's just like you would make any other gate. You just select the kind of gate you want. You pick what's included in your gate. And in this case, for index sorted data, we emphasize those gates on our plots. And we'll leave this as a bright green and click OK. And I'm just holding down my control to multiple select all these green wells. And you see that those are just getting updated on my plots below. So I'll close that out. Now, in addition to gating on heat maps, with index sort data, we can also just simply create gates on our regular plots here, just like any normal analysis. So if I wanted to, I could create a rectangular gate and I could capture all of my uh, red wells here on that gate. So we'll just call this our red positive. And here I'm gonna make this, you know, like a nice color that's gonna stick out. So maybe I'll make this um, a violet color and I'll emphasize this on my plots and click okay. And this is just a regular old gate here. So I'll focus in only on these red single positives. And what I can do with this is essentially apply it to my other plots for further analysis. And you can see now that I'm only looking at those red positives on my scatter plot here. But as I move this gate, we can focus in on different populations. And really the take home point of all of this being that our heat maps and our well gates, these are gonna function and interact with any other plot in the same way that you're used to see in an FCS Express. So any kind of gating hierarchy or strategy being used in your analysis, please try and remember that it is still applicable to what you're doing with your index sorting data. Now, one thing I'd like to point out in this example is that when you are actually pulling out the values of your well statistics here into that plate heat map stats grid, you're only going to obtain values for the wells that have sorted events. So let me show you what that's gonna look like. I'm gonna go up to my insert tab. And again, we're gonna grab a text box and I'm just gonna cover over all these plots here. And I'm going to insert in a plate heat map stats grid for the chorus data. So I'm going to right click and go insert plate heat map stats grid. Here is my chorus data down at the bottom, and we're going to insert in a grid layout stats grid. And what we can see here is I get this nice table again, but I only have values for wells A3 through A12. And in all of these other wells, what we're seeing here is this error text, which is just indicating that no statistic could be pulled because there are no wells, or there are no events in those wells. So the last change that I'm gonna to make to my analysis here is I'm just gonna add in a radius parameter for our chorus data, because again, none of these features are restricted to a specific data set. Chorus, Diva, Summit, Influx, we can add and extract statistics, overlays, well gates, well radius statistics, all of those things can be done with any of these data sets here. So I'm going to go and I'm going to add in my radius parameter here. So I'm going to select my heat map. We're going to go to overlays. And right now we're looking at our uh, red parameter and we're looking at the arithmetic mean. So for my radius parameter, we're going to look at something different. 
in this case are blue. And we can see the heat map is now updated to show the radius parameter for each one of those wells. So with that, we've come to the end of our examples today. And as a reminder, again, all of the data files that we work with today support those heat map overlays, the radius parameters, the stats grids. So if you didn't see me create those objects for that specific file type that we have listed here, we can do that. Keep in mind that the heat maps function in the same way as all of the other plot types you're used to using. So the well gates will function in the same way as well. So the index sorting data analysis will hopefully be a very familiar and simple process for you to use using our plate heat map plots. Now in closing, I'd like to thank everybody for coming today. And if you have any questions that weren't covered in our webinar, please feel free to stick around as we'll be answering questions for the next few minutes, or you can reach out to us directly with those questions via our email inbox at support at denovosoftware.com. And you can ask us questions about this webinar or about FCS Express in general. Or you can visit our website at www.denovosoftware.com to learn more about FCS Express and check out all of our support resources, recorded webinars, and other documents. And with that, I'm going to open up the floor to questions. So thank you, everyone, and you all have a great rest of your afternoon.